So Casper has been great because not only are you challenged and pushed and you're taught new things and new skills and you're developed as an artist, you also have this community of collaborators that you can now have for the rest of your life. Um, and you're surrounded by so much creativity and interesting ideas and it just sparks all of these new things inside yourself as well. And it's just been the most joyous experience. I've loved it. This was my first ever training course and I definitely feel that Casper Arts has allowed me to experiment in a medium and genre I've never created before. Most importantly in a safe space with some amazing people. It's certainly been that Kickstarter to get those ideas I've had in my head down on paper, invest in time in it and looking back I realise my ideas can actually come into fruition. And one word to describe Casper Online. Um very hard to narrow it down but simply joyous. Having graduated this summer and coming into the industry at this unprecedented time, working with Casper Arts came at a time that I just felt really lost and uncreative. On this journey I was able to connect with a whole bunch of creatives and learn a set of new skills that I'll carry for life. Thank you Casper Arts and I'm excited for what's to come. Um, I'm really grateful to Casper for keeping me inspired and creative and giving me something amazing to work towards. Uh, I'm also so grateful for all the amazing people I've met, all the industry professionals and all the other actors. It's been great to talk to people who are in the same boat. Also, it's been really reassuring to talk about kind of what happens next and how we move forward. It's such a difficult time for the arts, but just because it's hard doesn't mean that we have to stop. We'll just find another way. Um, yeah, and thank you, Casper, for showing me how that can be done. Casper Online is bloody brilliant. One word to describe Casper Arts for me would be, I'd say, fruitful, because it's, um, it's allowed me to network with a range of different people, um, to understand the industry better, and also it's allowed me to hone in some of my own skills, such as um, acting, um, devising my own stuff, um, and it's allowed me to gain more confidence in whatever I'm doing and gain more confidence in in my um, my craft and my vision. So yeah, thank you everyone at Casper Arts. Casper Online has been so incredible in giving me the time, the space, and the genuine support from industry guests, from our course leaders, from every single other student on the course, to really explore every aspect of my creativity and to have confidence in sharing that with people, from directing to writing, to acting, to editing, and to do that alongside such a group of incredible collaborators has been so exciting, and I cannot wait um, to see them all hit the industry. Casper has been one of the most uh, incredible and rewarding experiences of my professional career to date. Um, I've met the most incredibly talented bunch of people who I really hope will be lifelong friends and will be able to continue to work with um, way into the future. Uh, Natasha and Michelle have both been absolutely incredible as have all of the industry professionals that have come in to teach us their bits. Um, I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you. Casper Arts is inventive and adapting to the changing world that we face as creatives. That's down to the people involved, both leaders and industry professionals we got to have and the students, my friends, who come from every background possible. Um, this showcase wouldn't have happened without any of them and the confidence that has been instilled in me doing this course. So thank you so, so much. Right. Okay. Hi, uh, you must be... Hi, I'm Elise. <laughs> Sorry, a bit formal. Oh, I'm Hannah, by the way. Hey, you're Fly Guy 95, right? Yeah, Nathan, yeah. Yeah, I'm Theo. So, what do you... Well, actually, I run my own company. Well, it's always been something I wanted to do, so... Um, no, it's, it's, it's my company that I own. I'm the CEO. 
actually, we advise companies on sustainable packaging ideas. Nothing to do with, um, cupcakes. I actually just came out of a relationship. He was... Well, we were together since sixth form, and I think we just grew apart, to be completely honest with you. But I'm definitely ready to get myself back out there. I mean, it's not like we're getting any younger. Sorry it took so long for me to message you back. 11 days is excessive, even for me. <laughs> no worries if not. It's actually the first time I've done this. Not like ever, just with a girl. Turns out nerves don't mix well with anxiety, so I've been holed up in bed all week. But hey, I've had a shower and cuffed my jeans for you, so let's have a fucking good time. Don't ah, oh, Matty, me. Your mate is not coming. God, blind dates are bad enough without all this technical wizardry. I'm never letting you near my dating life again. Tinder was a bit of a shock to the system. I mean, they all come in there with the real connections and perfect matches, but I'm not convinced. I mean, no, no, not you. I mean, this is... Okay, this is lovely. I mean, you came and swooped right in with your how are you, you know, and, and you literally saved me from all the dick pics. You're literally my knight in shining armour. And, and nobody's actually asked me how I'm doing recently, so thanks. I'm fine. Hey, speaking of horrendous dates, do you remember that guy Bobby set me up with? Thought I was a dude? <laughs> I mean, I get it, but like... Who doesn't internet stalk their dates? I mean, I find it hard to like pin down, but... Oh no, there is one thing. No, I can't. It's actually awful. Okay, well... My brother's a massive Star Wars fan, so I watched all the films aged 10. Princess Leia in the gold bikini. No, I know, it's so awful and exploitative and all for the male gaze, but be still my beating heart. No, you've never watched. I think I'm a Ravenclaw, but you know, being a gym lad isn't typically a Gryffindor trait, right? It's not like the sorting hat measures your biceps or anything. <laughs> oh, um, I mean, I, I guess that's impressive as far as bicep circumference goes. I was at uni with them. I graduated last summer. I mean, it's been great, what with them out as a debt and all. I'm broke, but I'm also broken. And let me guess, there was sick everywhere and a traffic cone where it shouldn't have been? Yeah, I'm good like that. I think their internet was playing up. We're gonna try again tomorrow, though. A cup of tea would be lovely. Shit, sorry, it's like I've got two left feet, but it's my hands fuck sorry can i pay for that or something just sofa surfing until i can find somewhere more permanent yeah i mean I, i've not done that so soon before but why not it's not like we're living in the fucking 18th century is it i bet miles didn't tell you i have the coordination of a bloody hippo on a trampoline i promise i wasn't trying to undress you not that i wouldn't just you know, beer isn't normally my weapon of choice. Guess I'll just have to pay you back next time, if you want. Let me cut you off there, Jack. Oh, hi, Ali. Hi, yeah, it's me. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'll be there as soon as I can. Emergency. <laughs> this was really nice, though. Uh, same time on Tuesday? Amazing. Fly us out of here then, Fly Guy 95. I am looking after myself. I am looking after myself. I am taking full responsibility for my life. I am taking full responsibility of my life. I am being mindful and aware of my feelings and thoughts. I am being mindful and aware of my feelings and thoughts. I am healthily parenting myself.
Mm. Mm. Does your mood ever just completely switch? As in, you were fine a moment ago, laughing, messing about, feeling pretty good, or average at least, and then next thing you know, this cloud comes over you and it's like you're a completely different person. Like, the person joking around five minutes ago was an imposter. I ask because I do that. A lot. I hate it. I fucking hate it. It makes me feel like an alien. It makes me feel like I don't know how to act grown up. I feel as if I don't have full reign of my emotions. They control me, I don't control them. I read a quote about emotions earlier. Take control of your emotions before your emotions take control of you. Well, thanks Google. I tried that already and it ain't bloody worked. There's just so much resentment built up inside me over the course of all these different life events and somehow the lack of control seeps through the I've got it together attitude. Really? I don't. Not one bit. I don't think I've ever had it together. I'm realising that more and more as the days pass. As my slow, uneventful and draining days pass. <sighs> Something really small can happen. A friend says the wrong thing. My boyfriend misses a call. Completely mundane things because this is life and life just is. Anyway, these small things happen and I start to express my sadness and before you know it, that sadness becomes overwhelming and that overwhelming sadness becomes anger and that anger spirals into sickness. And then there's no going back. Well, there is. At some point, I'll calm down and begin to express my emotions in a healthier way. But God help the person who tells me to calm down. Hi. Future me, I guess. I've been going to these sessions. And they tell you to like write your feelings down. And I'm really shit at writing, so I thought maybe this would be like an easier way. I planted the seeds in the bottom of the garden. They look beautiful. Everybody comments on them. And then they ask me where I got them. And so I tell them, and they go all quiet. Which is understandable because. Planning your own funeral was a bit of a fucking dark thing for you to do. Like, even for you. I think I'd do it too, though. If I knew. But I'd have them carry me in, because I do not want a fucking trolley. Friends theme tune blasting. You've got to make them laugh a little bit first, just because then when you make them cry later, it hurts a bit more. Just basic storytelling. And a photo slideshow of me looking ridiculously attractive. We could tell you chose your own photos. Fucking hell, no one else would have used the infamous MAGA strip photo on the front cover. And then, just a little bit of lame is. Totally unnecessary, but guaranteed to break some hearts. I like the flowers idea. It's nice. Plus, then, no one can ever really forget you, can they? Not that we would, sorry, but just in case you'd slipped, or started to fade a bit, all we'd have to do would be to look out of our kitchen window and there you are. Everyone's favourite piss-ed poppy. <laughs> That's how I remember you, you pissed up in MAGA. <laughs> and I think you'd like that. I would. I'm not sure how people would remember me, really. Or if 
find worth remembering at all. I was fine after, but time actually seems to have made it worse. Like, the weight that I feel on my chest, it gets heavier, and I haven't planned it. Not really. I just think about it sometimes. And it was different for you because you didn't have a choice, and I do have a choice, and that just makes me a massive fucking cunt. How much do I have to have planned it for it to be planned? Is it just, is it a thought? An idea? Is that enough? Have I already made the decision? I don't know if it's my time or not. And if it was, I think I would know. I think I would be certain. And I'm not. I really fucking miss you, Pop. Furloughed from the Madding Crowd, a step-by-step -step guide to how lockdown has transformed us all into period drama heroines. Step one, crafts. Because there's no point saying you've been productive unless you literally have something to show for it. Firstly, painting. It's cubits. Secondly, embroidery. Or, as I like to call it, maybe sewing a single star onto my jeans will temporarily satisfy my craving for physical contact with anyone, and I mean anyone, outside my immediate family. Step two, avoiding direct sunlight. No. Nope. Step three. Letters. I don't see it. Step four. Walks. Because nothing attracts a man like a powerful stride. Step five, dancing. Black Where better to meet all those eligible young bachelors? For today. Thank you guys so much for Mum! Step six, flirting. Never since the good old days has invading someone's personal space felt so dangerously sexy. So, how are you? What? How much? And finally, step seven. Rinse and repeat, indefinitely, forever and ever, amen. The bunch of sisters, huge stately home and brooding husbands should follow very soon. What did you expect? No. Really, what were your expectations of this moment? I actually probably only hate you because I'm jealous. You did what I could never do. Remember when we were kids, I'd get battered by the older kids and, and my mum and dad would be like, oh, don't worry, Michelle, those bullies who kicked your skull in and called you a dyke don't hate you. No, they're just jealous. They're jealous of your brilliant personality and your ability to be yourself in spite of everything. In spite of everything. And I knew, actually, that no, they hate me because I'm not like them. They don't want to be me. Why would they want to be the punch bag? But here, now, in this situation, it's finally true. I want to be you so much that I actually despise you and everything you stand for. You fucker. When I was little, I used to draw us together. Two stick lesbians with a heteronormative stick cat and a standard three floor stick house. A floor for each of us. But I'm not little anymore and you fucked off, so... Did you meet someone else? No. I don't want to know. 
Is that why you left? Because after two years of dating on and off and a whole lifetime of friendship, what? You don't love me anymore. That's impossible. How did you do it? I've actually got a guy over right now, Kevin. So I can't chat for long. He's a swimmer. When you were getting out of the car the last time, did you know? I know you did. Too quick to think to write a text. Opportunity is not a lengthy visitor and all that. You look exactly the same. I thought you'd have changed at least a little bit. When I'd imagined you, I didn't do it a lot. I did, in bed. I'd lie there and think about you, think about all of you, how it felt to touch you. It's different with other people. Not better or worse, just different. And I'd think of all the times you'd left before, and um, why the fuck am I still here? Waiting. How dare you? I text. I called. I called your fucking mum, and she said you told her months ago. And still, I waited. I thought you would have changed more. I hoped at least you'd be uglier. <laughs> Losing the best thing that's ever happened to you can do that to a person. So I've heard. It's easier to imagine you as this fucking awful person than it is for me to just remember you. And the nice stuff. Was there any nice stuff? Did you ever do nice things for me? Did I ever say anything nice to you? Was I a good person? Well... Are you coming in then? You bastard. I've never really thought of myself as any particular kind of person. Although I'm brash, I'm crude, I'm, I'm not, not afraid, afraid to say what's on my mind. mind. I've never had an issue with telling someone I don't like to go fuck themselves. I'm, I'm vulnerable. vulnerable. It started three years ago. After the incident that left me broken and invalidated. Yet yeah, strong and unyielding to anyone else's desires from that point onwards. Have, Have you, you ever, ever just had, had enough? enough? Had enough of pleasing people? Of doing what's expected of you? Of saying the right things? And being the good little Catholic girl you were raised to be? Stand, Stand up straight. straight. Don't, don't drink too much, don't, don't have, have sex, sex with men, men but also definitely, definitely don't, don't have sex, sex with women. women. Because if you do, then don't bother coming home tonight. As women, we strive to be enough. To be seen, to be heard, to be worthy of existence, and yet still, as women, we fight. We burn our bras and take back the right to coexist as human beings, whilst having to argue with old white men just to practice those human rights we were supposedly meant to be born with. We're on the way. We're gaining some weight behind us. We're allowed to get married to each other now. Legally. And yet, this was all done in my adult lifetime. These outdated ideologies are still very much in date. Old white men follow me wherever I go. Smile, love. Aren't you lovely? What? No smile for me today. That's it, darling. Go on, kiss her. You just need a real man to show you what you're missing. Let me give you some proper dick and you'll never be a lesser again. But, but let's, let's be, be honest, honest they're, they're not, not all old, old, are they? You stop, you stare, you gawk, smile, leer, jeer, drool over my very simple existence, not realising, not wanting to realise. There is a very real, intimidated human being behind this exterior, one, one who has been, been on the wrong side, side of your wandering, wandering hands one, one too many, many times, times before. before. Behind the vulgarity that spills from my lips towards your deafened ears is the same scared little Catholic girl who knows she should just, just keep, keep walking. walking. A girl who clutches tightly onto the terrified hand of her girlfriend, praying to anyone who will listen just to let us get out of here unharmed, unbloodied and, and alive. alive. But I'm not some fucking animal asleep in some zoo. I'm not a piece of food to tell one's teeth. I'm not a word in a language that you, you don't, don't understand. understand. Needing to be stared at for as long as you, you need, need until I start to make sense. sense. I'm, I'm a lion. I'm, I'm a warrior. A I am a human fucking woman. woman. Hear me roll, bitch. I probably shouldn't have gone in hindsight. I don't feel great about it. It's not like me being there would have changed things, though.
It doesn't matter how far back I rewind. There's nothing I could have done or said differently to change the outcome. So yeah, I don't have anything to feel guilty for really. It's just a shit situation and we should all just accept that it's shit and move the fuck on. I got a text from mum which let me know that it had finally happened. It sounds horrible, but I was quite angry at the time because that Drake song was playing. I need a one dance. It's like my favourite song at the time and I remember thinking, well, that's this song fucked for me. I was with a girl. She had on one of those tight red dresses. I was going to take her home with me, but thought that might be a bit insensitive considering you were. And I knew it would upset mum too, so I thought it would feel different. was scared I might cry, but... No. Maybe I'd gotten all my grieving all over and done with. It wasn't like you weren't ill for fucking ages, was it? And also, I can't just cry about my dead granddad in the middle of Roses, could I? I mean, the boys had never let me hear the end of it. They were all dancing around me, not a worry in the fucking world. But she was looking at me. And all of a sudden, it was like... Like I needed air. Uh, the music always been this fucking loud. I expected to feel sad. But this was... This was more like, this was more like there wasn't enough air in the room. Choking maybe. Don't get me wrong, it, it's not, it's not like I, it's not like I wanted you to die. But I didn't want you to live like that either, so, suffering is. Yeah. I tried to be all subtle about it, slide off to smoke, gather my thoughts a bit, but this girl. Red dress, she followed me. I tried to give her the shake-off, but it's, it's... she knew. And I get outside. And I light up and she comes round the corner like, God, I almost lost you for a minute then. Is everything okay? Fuck's sake. Why'd she have to ask me that? And I could feel it building up inside of me. And I thought, I can't open my mouth or I'm gonna cry. And she's gonna think, oh, fucking hell, what a fucking weirdo. And in that moment, I couldn't decide whether... whether it made me more of a weirdo telling a complete stranger about my problems, or if it didn't. She grabbed me and turned me around so that she's against the fence and that my back's against everyone else out there. Not that anyone was paying any attention anyway, because they were all pissed out of their minds by this point. She's got my head on her shoulders and she's holding me, and we breathe. And as we stood there, it felt like all the pain that I'd been feeling just slowly seeped away. Like she absorbed it somehow. When I'm ready, we go back inside. The lads all give me that look like they knew what I was up to when they didn't have a fucking clue. I don't remember her name. Why can't I remember her fucking name? It's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. know every single one of your movements. I know who you talk to. <laughs> I even know what time you had a big fat shit. So, don't you dare even try and pretend. Oh, I, I don't know, um, I can't remember. Uh, because you and I both know exactly what you've done and what you keep on doing. This is just a matter of formality. The guys back in the office thought, maybe I could be the one to knock some sense into you. I can explain. Oh, I can. Go on. 
on then, by all means. You think I haven't heard everything before? I, um, I, um, uh, mm, uh. I am here because you watched 15 episodes of that dumb show, knowing full well you have a project due tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What was it? I, were you uh, waiting for inspiration? Oh, my absolute personal fave. You work best under pressure. Don't you? You're right. I am the one who pressed play next episode knowing I have a project due tomorrow. <laughs> And there we have it. A confession. I hope you guys have that on tape. Brill. That's the first step, you know. You have to realise this leaving everything into the last minute thing is just detrimental to, to your work and not just your work, your mental health. Don't you? You're like kicking yourself when you're up at 4 a.m. trying to rush something you should have done days ago. I, do. I just don't understand why you right. do this to yourself. It's just um, painful to even think of. Never mind. Even. Session. even. <sighs> wow, the graphics are just so good this year. I just. So convincing. <laughs> Thank you, Motivatorgram. In just two sessions, I've never felt more motivated to stay on top of my day and not lose precious time. Introducing Motivate O oh, Gram Terms and conditions apply Motivate O oh, Gram is not responsible for any harm caused by holograms You must be 18 plus to subscribe
There's a lot going on at the minute, isn't there? And it's fucking overwhelming. Pardon the language, but it is. I mean, it's hard enough trying to get the strength to just go to the shops or the post office. Or, you know, apply for a new job. But today's the day. You need to go outside. Your friends have remembered you and invited you for a drink. That doesn't seem so bad. That seems kind of nice, actually. You gather the strength to take a shower. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. But shit, you've remembered the hot water doesn't come on automatically anymore. Need to remember to call a plumber. You run downstairs covering whatever modesty you have left to go flick the boiler on. Before quickly sprinting back up before one of your housemates gets in there before you. You wait for the water to heat up. Ferris Bueller, you can leave now. Washed and mostly dry, you turn yourself to makeup, a task you used to find fun when it was still a hobby. Now it's a chore, just a dull reminder of how utterly pointless everything is. Just another 20 minutes you spend staring at a face that your brain tells you is disgusting and unlovable. Ugh. Jesus, look at your skin. You're 27, how have you not glowed up already? Fuck off, please! Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, fuck right off. You managed to get through that. Next, wardrobe. What's the point? Nothing's gonna fit you anyway. I saw you eat that entire multi-pack yesterday. Thank you. Oh no, you can't wear that one. That's the one that makes that tiny bit of your arm that you hate stick out and you know everyone is gonna mention it. Oh! You swap again and decide on something before she can object. I'm helping. That'll do. Last step. Leave the house. Right? Make sure the doors and windows are locked. Try to ignore that. I'm not doing anything. You check your bag one last time. Keys, phone, chewing gum. Okay. Are you sure you locked the back door? You make your way back through the house to check the back door. <sighs> and it's locked. Of course it is. You locked it five minutes ago. How could you forget that? You know that's the reason people don't like having you around, right? You can't even remember the simplest of things. That's not true. They invited me. They want me there. Are you sure about that? Go away! They all hate you. They only invited you out of politeness. And they're going to be disappointed if you actually turn up. Sure, they'll give you a hug, say it's nice to see you. But they won't mean it. They're just being polite. That's the only reason they asked you. 
to be polite because that's the nice thing to do with someone like you. They feel sorry for you. Sorry that you don't have any other friends. Sorry that you're so tragic you can't even manage to call them and ask them how they're doing. You're pathetic. And the best part is, you don't even have to bother explaining that you're not coming. No one's going to call you or text to see if you're on the way. Because they're all secretly hoping that you won't turn up. They don't care. It's not true. I know it's not true. I hope it's not true. And I promise I will be posting my new Smoky Eye Look video for you all later this week. So stay tuned for that. Now, back to what I need to share with you all. I was just on my phone scrolling through all my socials and I come across this DM from a company called Spectra. I know, sounds super cool, right? So obviously I open it and basically they're releasing this new thing called Spectra Unlimited. Now I know you're all probably thinking, well, what the fuck is that? But listen to this. So Spectra Unlimited is this new sort of microchip implant thing that allows you to access the internet wherever you are. Literally wherever you are. So they've sent over all the forms and I've signed them and I'm about to leave to go get the implant put in. I'm well scared so wish me luck because I hate needles but they have said that it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, and yeah, so that's all for today. So like, comment, subscribe and I will catch you all on the flip side. So you guys heard Naz the MUA had her Spectra Unlimited chip implanted, right? I was always one of those, lol, I'd never get something implanted for the longest time. But this current world we're living in has taught me life is short, man. So I signed up, thought it would take forever. Guys, literally hours later, I was in their labs. The people who work there are so freaking nice. They for real treated me like the goddamn queen, guys. Felt like someone flicked the back of my head and whoosh, I was connected. Cannot believe I didn't do this sooner. As in, I am legitimately angry I was so hesitant. Wow. of the chip. I thought it would hurt more to be honest but it was just a little nip like getting your ears pierced. And then boom the entire history of everything came rushing into my head. 
It was like magic. In here, I get to be exactly who I want to be. Who I was meant to be. I don't have to be lonely anymore. I can have a thousand friends across oceans and time zones. I can do anything, learn anything. Change how I look. Or how I sound. I can be whoever, whatever I want. I, I am, am unlimited. 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 Whoever finds this, I hope I can save you before you end up like me. Spectra is not what it seems. I can't explain right now, but you have to get out of there. However you can, you need to unplug and get out. They take everything that makes you you. But I wasn't strong enough. It's taking all of my energy to get this message to you. And I hope it reaches you before they come back. We apologize for this glitch. We will now reboot to ensure the cleansing of any harmful material that may have infiltrated the spectra systems. Whoa, whoa, what the hell was that? Um, what's going on? That was super weird. We apologize for any inconvenience. You will be momentarily removed from spectra and placed in- That wasn't a hacker, that was me. Is this some kind of prank? What do you mean that was you? It was me, but I don't remember recording it. But that's my house, I don't understand. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't do this. Do you know how much this promotion is gonna boost my following? Like, a lot. This company is massive. And I'm not throwing all that away because of some fucking weirdo who hacked the system. Yes, Ali. There is nothing to fear. Spectra are here to help us. They're here to unleash our potential. To make us unlimited. Yes, Ali. There is nothing to fear. Spectra are here to help us. Yes, Ali. There is nothing, there is to, nothing fear to, to fear. Spectra, Spectra, Spectra are here to help, to, help us. Us. To, help to make us unlimited. To unleash our potential. potential. To make us to make us unlimited. Unlimited. Sometimes my head is full. I'm not sure what it's full of, but it just feels full. F-U-L-L, -L, full. It feels heavy, as if something needs lifting. This feeling isn't there all the time, but when it is, I just need to be here. When I come here, I always leave feeling lighter. The air feels clearer, the breaths feel deeper, and my feet feel more grounded. <laughs> it's like a motto, isn't it? The air feels clearer, 
the breaths feel deeper and my feet feel more grounded. When I'm here, I just take time to appreciate what is around me. Having a walk, watching my footprints in the sand, checking out the horizon, (laughs) enjoying the ripples of the waves, how they come and how they go, some stronger than others. I don't know if you've ever watched the waves, but it's quite therapeutic. When I'm here, I feel free. My head feels clear. I feel lighter, ready to go again. It's nice to be seen. Not in a weird way, like I don't get off on it or anything, just... When I'm feeling a bit lonely, I dance with all the lights on and the curtains open because I like the idea of an audience. Besides all the moths. I've got a playlist for it and everything. Called it Mellow. So it sounds cool and just a little bit sexy, but not so much that all ten of my Spotify followers judge me for it. I know I've massively romanticised it. I don't mean to go all Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou on you. I mean, realistically, even if it was young Leo DiCaprio, I would shit a brick if I saw someone watching my window. Speaking of... It actually happened last week. The watching, not the brick shitting. Lizzo is on. I'm really feeling myself, but then I turn around and lock eyes with this person across the street from our house. They're eating a bag of crisps and staring at me. Properly, deliberately staring and not looking away, not even flinching when I catch them. And it's weird because I don't feel embarrassed or caught in the act or intruded upon. I just feel really fucking powerful because they don't look away and neither do I. And I just keep moving. I am Margot Fontaine, Maddie Ziegler and Fred Astaire all rolled into one. I am unstoppable. And then, right then, when I have hit that sweet spot straddling rhythm and melody and groove, my phone dies. I look down to stop myself slipping out of an overly ambitious spin and they're long gone by the time I look up. Even with the past few months I've had, this, this right here is the moment that makes me want to question my own sanity. I'm saved by the crisp packet in the gutter. Skips. An interesting choice. Oddly nostalgic. And now I'm psychoanalyzing the snap choices of a stranger who I'm not completely sure is even real and I'm considering running down the street to ask them what they thought of my moves just to have someone to talk to and I'm thinking about all of the friends I haven't hugged in over six months my baby cousin, my gran, all ten of my Spotify followers and here we fucking go! The overthinking train. Destination insomnia. Next time I'll close the curtains. I have this dream, right, that I'm in a hot air balloon. You know, one of those big colourful ones you see in films and at carnivals, but they're too expensive for you to have a ride, so you just kind of stare at them longingly, hoping if you manifest it hard enough, your mum will pay for you to have a ride this time. But she doesn't. Not because she doesn't want to, just because she doesn't have any cash. She's only working part-time as a cleaner, and she's raising three kids on her own. And, well, that's hard. (laughs) She never would have even dreamt of getting a job either if dad wasn't such a wanker and fuck. Yeah, so, um, anyway, I'm in this hot air balloon and I, um, pull down on the, you know, the metal chain thing, the thing that makes the the noise. I pull down on that and I, I start to float. And I wave down and everyone I know is gathered beneath me, cheering me on because me, I'm going places. And then the cheering turns to yelling. Come back down. You're going too high. Where do you think you're going? And I say, I don't know. I don't care. Anywhere. Away. I might be back, maybe, but I don't know, so don't wait. But wherever I'm going, it'll be perfect. And then, before I know it, everyone beneath me has turned to ants. Workers slogging away to serve the Queen, never reaching the fruits of their labour. But not me. No, 
I float and float, never to be seen again. At least not by this lot. But the higher I get, the colder it gets. And what felt like freedom now just feels lonely and a bit lost. Hell, I'm really fucking lost. And it's it's like, I crave freedom, right? I, I, I crave it, but I also want comfort and support. And well, those things don't go together. And uh, I mean, well, I, I, I don't have either anyway. So, so I, I just float and fade away and before I know it all of me is gone. I used to think those pot ebelines were really magical right? Until I googled it. Yeah how to ruin everything you deem mystical 101. It turns out they only float because hot air rises right? So the hot air inside the balloon is less dense than the cold air outside the balloon and as long as that's true they'll continue to rise. And then to come back down, you just gradually make the air inside the balloon cooler and they start to come back down again. It's not magical at all. Just science. Like everything else. God, you can literally explain anything these days. Why am I attracted to people who aren't my type on paper? To widen the gene pool and to strengthen the immune system. Learned that after 21 hours of Googling why did my dad leave my mum? And is it my fault that he left? Why are babies born so pathetic? <laughs> because if they were born with more evolved brains, then they die in childbirth and take the mums with them. God, sorry. Um, what do most people talk about in these sessions? I, I must sound really sad. Like, not, not depressed sad, just like pathetic sad. I mean, maybe a bit of both, to be honest. I mean, and I am. I, I am honest. To a fault, really. I'm getting a lot of trouble for it because it makes people uncomfortable. <laughs> you see... My hot air balloon is just about as vivid my life gets these days. Everything else is just murky. It's like my head is really fucking murky. It's like, I feel like I have a point to make, but I can't quite connect the dots and I do my research and I find the answers in minute detail and yet still my brain is murky. <laughs> Great word, murky. <laughs> but not my balloon. <laughs> my balloon is vivid. I, I, I'd go as far as saying technicolour. <laughs> and that came from my brain, right? You know, I made that and so that means that somewhere Deep inside me, somewhere I've forgotten, there is hope. I have hope. And that, that is clear to me. I don't know why I pay you. My self-analysis is top class. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Jodie, and I know that giants are real. I know because my daddy is one. He is tall enough to reach the books on the top shelf and the apples on the tree. He is twice as tall as me. He is even taller than Bruno. Bruno is my biggest bear. His heart is strong enough to push blood around his whole body and power his muscles. His arms are strong enough to lift me up and, and sometimes Alice too. Alice is my sister. When I feel sad, he takes me to the happy tree. When I feel ugly in my belly or my face, he tells me that I am pretty. I am pretty because of the flecks in my eyes and the gaps in my teeth and the bumps in my nose. And I know that he is right. When I do not feel entirely like me, he tells me, you are still you. And he's right. I am still me. My daddy is strong enough to support all of us. And sometimes we support him too. 
so I know that giants are real. Because I live with one. Let this be my summertime with azure sky and rolling sea and smiling clouds and wind-kissed laughter and just myself entranced with thee and children playing in the glory of a carefree, youthful day and sunshine shining from the heavens and tears and sighing fled away. Let this be my happiness midst the earth's swift flowing woe. Let this be my only solace just to know you love me so. Just to know that we'll go winging far above this earthy climb, hand in hand through laughing meadows, let this be my summertime.
Hello and welcome. Thank you for choosing CHIP, a start to a better upgraded you. Please ask your questions now. What about, what about side effects? Are there any? We have no registered side effects. Please ask questions now. Uh, what about sex life? Does it does it affect performance? Can it help with my injury? We have no registered side effects. It makes you better. I've got a lot of investments here though for me and my clients. My team is in reports of some malfunctions. Has your upgrade been modified? No. What? What do you mean, no? No. Is it safe? I don't like this. You've got my, my data already. So. What about going back? Account Is it reversible? Can we go back? The procedure is not reversible. The stakes are high, but imagine the rewards. This is just weird. This is an upgrade. It will improve you. Decide whether you will upgrade. What do you mean? No. Ah, uh, that's not enough time. Nah, I need more time. We need more time. Hello? No, no, wait, 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 I need wait, more wait, time. Wait, wait, just... hey, but what if it doesn't work? This upgrade can change our lives. Is <laughs> Here you are. You need to talk about your performance. No, no, you need to talk about your performance. Um, no, I need more time. We need more time. Time is ending. No, I need more time. Hello. We need more time. Hello. Hello. so tight. Time is ending. I don't know what to do. Thank you for submitting your response. We'll see you soon. Upgraded. Where are you from? I respond here. To which they say, Nah, where are you from from? I'm from here here. And that answer never satisfies them. I am the hyphen between British and Indian, a border splitting myself in half. Home to me is a cup of fresh masala chai. Home to me is a bowl of mum's tolkadal. Home is yet another rerun of Kalho Naho. I thought my home was accepted, seeing the turmeric latte trend as I got coffee with a friend. But the repulsed glares at my curry lunch packed an insecure punch. Having thick, fluffy brows the girls craved, but teased for my arm hair, and so I shaved. Seeing our bindis and henna on the festival hot list, but mocked for wearing a sari, now I'm pissed. When home puts a target on your back, you start to disguise your cultural ties, avoiding those critical eyes. Out of fear of judgment, through the episodes of shame and self-loathing, let me take the look of my ethnic clothing. You pick what pieces of my culture to cut in style, but all I wanted was to fit in for a while. My culture is not a trend. My culture is my skin, my heritage and history. You cannot take it away. My father was a refugee. His survival story folded into the layers of his mother's sari. The prejudice and racism lingered like the scent of fresh incense. The expulsion of Asians. They wanted to go home, but where do we go when home tells us to leave? Home shut us out and forced us to flee, taking the long journey across the sea. We came here with nothing, welcomed here with newfound aggression. Packies! Exhaustion is all our legs can feel. I tell father I am not welcome in my new home. Refugees! Fleeing any way we can. We know the dinghies aren't secure, but life here will be better, I'm sure. We were just trying to find a way to keep our family safe, whilst they label us dirty immigrants. We did not want to run, we did not want to leave. Asylum seekers. The politicians say we're here to steal your jobs and money, but still so arms to those who bombed us. Ain't that funny? Why are we allowing these racist ideologies to govern our nations, who only believe white is right? We are not the enemies in this fight. We must change our attitudes, our minds and our hearts. 
Racism is not inherent. Stop teaching children that there is only a space and a place for one race. Do not shut us out, because I have no doubt that there can be unity within this diverse community. I am the fusion of British and Indian. I am the connection of culture. My home is a Sunday roast dinner. Home is a pint from the local with my mates. Home is a duff duff after another nail-biting EastEnder episode. But my home is more than just one space. Home is still a cup of chai, my mum's talkadal, and another Bollywood rerun. And at the end of the day, we all want to belong. We all want to keep our families safe. We all want a place to call home. This is my home.